So, um, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been practicing a couple of the guidelines for solving our tr or for verifying our trigger days, right? The first thing is obviously to work with the more complicated side, the more complicated side, and try to simplify that, right? We don't want to try to expand secant to make it look like this, right? We want to go ahead and simplify this, see if we can make it look like secant. Now, the next thing we want to do is if it's asking us to do operations or factor, you want to look to, hey, can we do the operations that it's asking? Or should we factor it? You know, what are some other things we can look at? Well, obviously right now it wants us to add, you know, add these two. And before I'm adding, I'm looking at cosine of x plus sine x over tangent of x. That's it's kind of looking pretty complicated right now, right? So one thing I want to do is maybe let's see if I can simplify this. And the cardinal rule test, when you're trying to simplify things, you kind of get stuck. You don't know what to do next. You want to convert things to sines and cosines. Okay? It's a very good way, right when you get stuck, start converting things to sines and cosines. So this is our AS cosine plus sine of x times sine of x over cosine of x. Okay? Now, what I can do is I can multiply this out. I can multiply this through, and then what I notice though is I can now have this as a cosine, as my cosine is my going to be my denominator. All right, so I'll treat that put over one. So I have cosine of x over one plus sine squared of x over cosine of x. Now, why would I do that? Well, for one thing, I know that once I get a sine squared, that's going to open up possibilities for me to use my trig identities. Correct? Right. Because remember, sine squared and cosine squared equal, when you add them, they equal one, right? So that's what I'm saying. We like when we have our trig identities because that opens up doors for us to start, you know, manipulating our expression. However, now I have it over cosine, so I still need to combine these two. So if I need to combine this cosine over one plus sine squared x over cosine of x. What we have to do is obviously get this common denominator. So the common denominator between one and cosine <coughs> is going to be cosine. So I'm going to have to multiply by cosine over cosine. What that gives me is cosine squared of x over cosine of x plus sine squared of x over cosine of x. So now I have the same denominator. I can combine them. <laughs> so remember when I told you that opens up your possibilities? <laughs> sine squared plus cosine squared, we know it's going to equal 1, right? So we have 1 over cosine of x. Well, guess what? 1 over cosine of x equals secant of x which equals our original answer over there. So ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I looked through this and I kind of knew the path I wanted to follow. You're going to come up with paths that are going to come to dead ends. Or you, at least you're going to think they're going to come to dead ends. Just try something, see where it's going to work. And then if it doesn't work, try something else to keep on working through it. Okay? But the best important thing, guys, you're going to have to, you just have to try. Work on the, all the things you know. 